Right, good afternoon. We'll go ahead and call to order the regular meeting of the City of Murfreesboro Board of Zoning Appeals for March 31st, 2010. First item on the agenda is the consideration of minutes for the regular meeting of February 24, 2010, as well as the special called meeting on March 5th, 2010. Are there any uh, changes to those minutes? If not, those minutes then will stand approved as presented. Uh, we'll move on now to new business. The first application under new business is a variance request. Application Z10008 by Mr. Matt Taylor of SEC, Inc. for First National Bank of McMinnville, requesting a seven-foot variance of the minimum required seven-foot separation between buildings and parking in the Gateway Design Overlay District for property located along the north side of Gateway Boulevard east of Garrison Drive. And Mr. Bomley, if you'd review that application for us, please. Certainly. Good afternoon, Chairman Rogers and members of the board. Our uh, first item on today's agenda, as Chairman Rogers mentioned, is for a variance to the minimum separation requirement in the Gateway Design Overlay District between buildings and parking on lots of less than an acre and a half. That minimum requirement is uh, seven feet. Uh, the applicant, um, First National Bank of McMinnville, being represented by Mr. Matt Taylor of SEC, uh, their design engineer has requested a full waiver of that requirement, uh, but only on the side of the building, which is their, which is their proposed drive-through. Um, we have seen this request for a number of, of different types of businesses in the Gateway Design Overlay District uh, the, whose businesses warrant uh, uh, direct access to the building from, uh, from the parking lot, uh, such as fast food restaurants, um, uh, tire centers and banks as well. Uh, and in this case, is no different. Uh, they will be compliant with the uh, minimum separation requirement except for the north side of the building, which is where the drive through is proposed to be located. And if we could go to the overhead, and you'll see the, the site. Well, first of all, the site is located along the north side of Garrison Drive or excuse me, the north side of Gateway Boulevard, just east of Garrison Drive. Uh, and you have the full-size copy of the site plan in front of you, as well as architectural renderings. And uh, the uh, property will have its frontage along uh, Gateway Boulevard, uh, but will also have access along its rear lot line on uh, Carl Williams Drive, which is a private street that, uh, that serves the, the lots in the uh, Waterstone Office Park. Um, the subject property is directly across the street from the uh, new hospital property. And uh, as you can see here, along the rear of the building here is the only area where they are actually requesting the variance from that minimum separation requirement. And uh, uh, it is, as I mentioned, to accommodate their drive-through tellers. Uh, and in their materials that they've submitted to the Board of Zoning Appeals as they have in, in, in or as similar applicants have, have uh, uh, referenced in previous similar requests is that uh, for the functionality of this type of business, uh, this particular regulation uh, makes it particularly difficult for the use of the property as, as a bank or fast food restaurant uh, without a variance to that requirement. Uh, the way the applicant is proposing to mitigate the impact of having uh, no separation between the building and parking on the north side of the building is to provide for ample landscaping on the back side of the property. Uh, you'll see in the landscape plan. That along the rear of the building have both uh, uh, landscaping along the edge of the parking lot as well as landscaping along the rear lot line. Uh, so there will be uh, uh, several layers of landscaping as uh, one were to view the property from the north, from that private street, Carl Williams Drive. And also, just to kind of give you a visual on the aesthetics of the building itself, And this shot here actually 
is from the side of how the building will look from uh, the north side showing the, uh, the drive through itself. I also wanted to mention that the uh, Planning Commission approved this. This is in the Gateway Design Overlay District. They approved it on initial design review and they saw no uh, issues with the applicant moving forward to the Board of Zoning Appeals for a variance request. And uh, afterwards, if, they, if this request is approved by the Board of Zoning Appeals, they'll have to go back to the Planning Commission for final design review slash site plan review. And as such, if the Board approves this request, staff recommends the following condition. The Planning Commission must grant final design review, site plan approval for the proposed development. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them before or after the public hearing. And Mr. Taylor is here as well if you have any questions for him. All right. Thank you, Mr. Blomley. Any questions for Mr. Blomley? Mr. Taylor, anything you'd like to add to this application? Uh, I am here for uh, questions, if need be. Uh, I think Mr. Bomley did a good job explaining what we were wanting. I will say the bank is excited about this uh, this location. It's their first branch in Murfreesboro. They do have a uh, written an office over in Stonegate One, over off Medical Center right now, but are excited to get this uh, a little bit more prominent as far as having their own building things going forward. All right. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Any questions? All right, then at this time, we'll go ahead and conduct a public hearing. Anyone present wishing to speak for or against this application, if you would, please come forward to the podium, state your name, your address, and any comments that you might have. And seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for any further discussions or motion. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, variance request. Second. With the, of course, the, com, the consider the conditions set by the staff. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, Mr. Taylor, that application has been granted. Thank you. Appreciate you being here today. All right, we'll move on to our next application under variance request. It's application Z10009 by Mr. Steve James of James & Associates Residential Designers, LLC, for Mr. Don Gregg requesting a 7% variance to the maximum allowed 25% lot coverage in a residential single-family RS-15 zone, and this is for property located at 628 East Main Street. Mr. Blomley. Thank you, Chairman Rogers. Uh, subject property, as you mentioned, is at 628 East Main Street. And if we could pull up the overhead, uh, is directly across the street from Central Middle School, and it is uh, west of University Street and east of Hancock Street, to kind of give you a, an idea of where this falls on East Main Street, and is also in the, the uh, Historic Zoning Overlay District as well. Uh, so the applicant has made this request prior to going before the Historic Zoning Commission uh, to get approval for the, uh, the aesthetics, the architecture of the, uh, of the proposed garage addition that he is seeking. Uh, the uh, applicant is seeking to build a garage addition, as I mentioned, The existing house actually already exceeds the uh, the maximum lot coverage on the site. Uh, the house, uh, you know, obviously predates our existing zoning regulations, and the footprint is actually, uh, even though the total area of the subject lot is is almost 19,000 square feet, uh, the footprint of the existing house, porch, and accessory structures equals 4,989 square feet, which is 26.5 percent of the uh, of, of lot coverage on the existing lot. So the applicant is already actually uh, exceeding that, that uh, maximum 25% with the existing structures on that property. Uh, the applicant had actually, um, when he acquired the property in 1993, there was actually a pool house and a pool on the property. So, uh, and those, the pool, both the pool house and the pool had been removed. So he is actually, uh, 
less nonconforming, if you will, than he was back in 93 when he, when he purchased the property because he's actually removed the, uh, the pool and the pool house. And the garage addition that he wishes to build, uh, according to uh, Mr. James, the applicant, who's his, uh, who's his architectural designer, will actually be approximately the same amount of lot coverage that was there when the applicant bought the property back in 1993. Uh, you can see, as you see from the overhead, the existing footprint of the house shaded in light gray. Uh, the applicant wishes to build a uh, garage addition to the uh, north, or excuse me, the uh, uh, south, the southwest corner of the house, and uh, the applicant currently has ownership of half of this garage here that is further to the southwest. It's kind of an unusual situation and, and quite, took quite a bit of time researching the deeds uh, for this property. As you can see on the, uh, on the aerial, there's a little sliver that runs along the west side of the house. Uh, apparently around 1981, uh, that little sliver was created and, and by 1987, uh, the previous owners of this house had acquired that, that sliver which was kind of a, a little no man's land there for a while. And, they, and so they acquired that. And then Mr. Gregg, who is the owner, the current owner of the property, who Mr. James is, is representing, uh, bought both the, the sliver and the, uh, and the main house lot back in 93. Uh, that sliver was created back in 1981 without any kind of uh, subdivision plat, uh, officially combining that with the, uh, with the, the house lot. Uh, but based on our uh, deed research, it does appear to be part of that lot, although it's never been created as a legal lot of record via a subdivision plat. Um, so what, you'll see one of the conditions that, that, uh, that we're requesting if the board approves this is that the applicant prior to building permits be required to have a subdivision plat recorded officially creating both the house lot and the sliver as one lot of record, which would help to clean up what has been a... Uh, kind of a, a little bit of a messy situation. Uh, I say messy simply from a research standpoint of trying to figure out what's what um, for about 30 years now. The applicant wishes to add a three-car garage onto the house and uh, uh, his only garage uh, that he has right now is, is half of this garage. He actually uses the whole thing but he only owns half of it. Uh, there's a quadruplex directly to the west of the subject property, and the applicant wishes to be able to have a little bit more privacy from the quadruplex and to be able to have his own garage on his own property, and, and that's the reason for uh, wanting to build the, uh, the three-car detached garage. Uh, with the uh, garage addition, which would have a total footprint of 920 square feet, uh, the existing footprint and the proposed garage footprint would equal 31.3% uh, lot coverage, uh, a 4.8% increase over what is there right now at 26.5. So he would need a 6.3% uh, variance and just as a matter of belts and suspenders adding a little bit of flexibility uh, to that, uh, we've advertised it as a 7% variance uh, so that in case there is a small amount of square footage added there would give him a little flexibility rather than keeping it at that uh, at that tenth of a percent. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, directly to the west of the subject property, is an existing quadruplex, which is here. Here's the subject property here. There's a single family residence uh, to the east. And directly to the rear of the subject property is a commercial building. So he actually has a commercial building that the property backs up to. Here's an elevation of the garage addition. This is from the rear. And this is from the side facing the quadruplex. You can see there'll be a two-car garage here and then a one-car garage that will protrude out a little bit further for, uh, to kind of increase the uh, aesthetic appeal of it. And this is the existing house here. Uh, 
and it's to show you some photographs of the uh, of the subject property. This is the front of the house as taken from East Main Street. This is the quadruplex next door, and that's the sh the shared driveway which the applicant does share with the uh, with the quadruplex tenants. This is looking down the shared driveway. This is the garage that the property line actually bisects. And that right now the applicant's ability to park is limited because of the, uh, the fact that the driveway is shared. There's a small area here uh, where his vehicle is there that, uh, where he can park outdoors. And then, uh, of course, he has the ability to use that, that garage even though he only owns half of it. This is looking at the back of the house, so the garage addition would actually be going long ways on this corner of the house. And as the applicant has stated in his, in his write-up, it's uh, one of the reasons that this request is uh, necessitated is due to the fact that um, the exist he's basically precluded from doing any kind of addition to the house based on the fact that the existing house, which was built predating current zoning codes, uh, already exceeds that maximum lot coverage. Uh, with that being said, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Uh, we do recommend three comments if you, or conditions if, uh, if the board sees fit to approve this request. Uh, the new garage will be subject to the review and approval of the Mur Murfreesboro Historic Zoning Commission. A subdivision plat creating the subject property as a legal lot of record must be recorded prior to the issuance of a building permit for the garage addition. And all property maintenance violations must be remedied prior to the issuance of a building permit for the garage addition. There were several open storage uh, violations in the, uh, in the rear of the property. Uh, with that being said, I'll be happy to answer any questions before or after the public hearing. And Mr. James is here if you have any questions for him. Thank you, Mr. Blomley. Any questions for Mr. Blomley? All right, Mr. James, anything you'd like to add to the application? Uh, Mr. Blomley explained it pretty well. It's a little complicated process we've gone through trying to get this established. but. Uh, Again, he's needing the privacy mainly from the quadruplex, and I have talked to Mr. Gregg, and he is—he knows the stipulations are on this agreement, and he is aware of those and willing to make anything that's necessary to do. Right. Any questions? All right. Then at this time, we'll go ahead and conduct a public hearing. Anyone present wishing to speak for or against this application, if you would please come forward. Seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for any further discussions or a motion. Mr. Blomley, um, I understand that as part of one of your conditions is to have this platted. Any issues dealing with the shared driveway that should be addressed as part of this plat or, or not necessarily? Not necessarily. I think we need to note it on the plat that the, uh, that the garage, which uh, you know, needless to say, is is in violation of current setback requirements. Was but was built a long time ago and was actually carved in half you know, prior to our current zoning ordinance going into effect. Just a note on the plat stating that that uh, that the garage is is non-conforming, so that it's so that in perpetuity that is that is out there and the, of record at the deeds office. Chairman Rogers, if there's no further discussion, I'll make a motion that we um, grant the variance request subject to all staff comments and conditions. A second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? 
If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, Mr. James, that application has been granted. Thank you. All right, we'll move on now to special use permit requests. Application Z10010 by Mr. Manley Thweet of Huddleston Steel Engineering for Northfield Boulevard Church of Christ, requesting a special use permit in order to expand an existing institutional group assembly use, a place of worship, in a residential single family RS15 zone for a property located at 2091 Pitts Lane. Mr. Blum, if you'd review that one for us, please. Thank you, Chairman Rogers. Um, subject property is located at the, uh, at the northwest corner of Pitts Lane and East Northfield Boulevard. It's the existing location of the Northfield Boulevard Church of Christ. Uh, you'll recall uh, two years ago on the property that is directly to the, we put the overhead up, the property that is directly to the west of the subject property, the Path of Life Church was approved. That, that has not currently been constructed, although I, uh, I know I've seen signs on there saying future home of the Path of Life Church. Uh, but this property is directly adjacent to that property, and the Northfield Boulevard Church of Christ was actually built prior to its annexation into the city limits. I believe it was built in 75 or 76 and, and annexed 10 years later. So we don't have, uh, you know, we don't have a special use permit request on hand for the original because it was built prior to its annexation into the city limits. It is zoned RS-15, as, as is the property next door. Um, and all property that is on the northwest corner, uh, north and uh, west of the subject property, is also zoned RS-15. Directly to the north is the McKinley Place subdivision, uh, which is currently under construction. What a house is currently under construction. The infrastructure is already in, uh, although only uh, several of those lots have been have been built on. But there is a, a house under construction uh, directly to the north of the subject property on one of those lots. Uh, directly across the street is a single-family residence across from the existing church building uh, on a large estate lot. And then the undeveloped property on the uh, northeast corner is uh, zoned OG, Office General. Uh, directly across Northfield Boulevard from the uh, subject property is the, uh, the city's fire hall as well as the uh, Jehovah's Witness Kingdom Hall. And as you saw by that aerial photograph, the majority of the subject property at 2091 Pitts Lane is, in fact, uh, undeveloped. It's, uh, the church, as it sits right now, is, is basically at the very northern third of the property. And that, and that northern third of the property encompasses both the existing building and the existing parking lot. Uh, the applicant wishes to uh, uh, expand further to the south with both the parking lot and the building and... Uh, uh, the main purpose of the building expansion will be for uh, additional auditorium space. Uh, to my knowledge, they're not proposing any, any classrooms, uh, but it's, it's basically to expand the, uh, the auditorium. Uh, and in doing so, they would also be expanding the, uh, the parking lot as well. And you have the site plan uh, in front of you, and you'll see the existing building which is located here, and they're looking to build in two phases, about a 6,800 square foot addition, and then there would be additional parking to the south. You see there's the existing parking lot, additional parking to the south, and then in phase two, they would propose to build uh, even more parking, uh, and that would be closer to uh, Northfield Boulevard. So they'd be utilizing most of their site through these two phases. Uh, the phase one building expansion would be less than 6,000 square feet, and the two you can see right here and right here, uh, they are uh, the phase two would be, be uh, expanding out the wings of the auditorium just a little bit more uh, for a total of a little less than 7,000 square feet of expansion for that building. <laughs> Because the, uh, the property is in an RS-15 zoning district, the applicant is uh, having to request a special use permit for that, for that church expansion. And they are uh, in, included in this request both phase one and phase two. Uh, staff advised the applicant to include both phases so that if their plans don't change in the future, they would not have to come back to the Board of Zoning Appeals for an additional special use permit. Uh, 
they appear to be meeting all of the uh, all of the requirements, all the standards in Section 9 for institutional group assembly uses. They are proposing a uh, Type C buffer along the northern property line adjacent to the uh, McKinley Place subdivision. Uh, they are not proposing a dumpster, but uh, will be using city carts as they do now, but would be adding a, an enclosure for those city carts so those would not be left out in the open. Uh, all of their parking is contained within uh, or outside of the, the required front setbacks as is required. Um, they are not proposing any kind of uh, additional uses such as daycares or, or uh, missions. Uh, it is my understanding from the applicant that uh, the use of, the, uh, of this facility would be uh, purely for it, the office uses during the week, but primarily uh, for just during uh, worship times, uh, the regular worship times that, that he's listed in his application materials. The, uh, the photometric lighting plan that's been submitted shows uh, uh, basically zero uh, spillover at the property lines of, uh, of lighting. Uh, the lighting that's being added is, pr is primarily uh, parking lot lighting. And, uh, and you can see on the photometric lighting plan the locations that those would be located. Uh, but the areas where it's not zero at the property line, zero foot candles, it's basically a neg negligible amount uh, such as 0.1 or 0.2 foot candles. Uh, the applicant has also submitted architectural elevations. And you should have some, some color elevations in front of you. And this is the, uh, the east elevation facing Pitts Lane. And this is the south elevation facing uh, Northfield Boulevard. And there's, there's uh, a little bit more architectural interest in this building than the existing building. The existing building does have a little bit of a dated feel, but they're going to attempt to match the colors as best they can. Uh, the existing building is all kind of a, of a cream colored brick. And uh, uh, they're going to try to match colors, but they're also going to add some, um, some, some uh, some uh, split base block on the bottom, uh, that's that red area, and as well as uh, 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 brick throughout the rest of the, uh, uh, the building as well. And uh, Mr. Young would be happy that they are adding a cupola, Mr. Halliburton. Uh, so I uh, thought I'd mention that. Mr. Young is famous for his, his, uh, his liking of, of cupolas on, uh, on architectural elevation. Um, and I'll also show you some photographs of the existing site. This is the existing church facing Pitts Lane. This is the existing parking lot. I think I ought to move that over because there's a beautiful car right there. <laughs> that one right an antique there. car show that day? It's... <laughs> <laughs> It's a beauty, isn't it? Uh, that's the existing parking lot right now. And this kind of shows you the uh, house that's under construction in McKinley Place just to the north. As you can see, that's basically the lot that's due north of the, uh, of the existing building. existing vegetation along that northern property line. But they'll be supplementing that in order to make a type C buffer. This is the single family residence directly across the street from the existing church building. Kind of looking at the open area uh, from Pitts Lane down to Northfield Boulevard, where that uh, the building and parking lot addition will be will, will be going. If the board if the board approves this request, uh, staff recommends the following conditions. Uh, the Planning Commission must grant site plan approval for the proposed development. As a function of its site plan review, the Planning Commission will also have final architectural review of the building, and all build building orientation requirements must be met to the satisfaction of the Planning Commission. 
uh, I've been working with uh, the architect on a few of the architectural issues, but uh, uh, what I've advised him is that is that those the issues that are still remaining can be uh, can be uh, ironed out at the planning commission level. Uh, that what the board needed to see today was to make sure that uh, the architecture that was pre that was presented was compatible with the uh, with the surrounding uh, surrounding area, and then finally the landscape plan will be subject to the final review and approval of the city horticulturist, and uh, she will have to look uh, intently at the existing tree line along that uh, along that uh, northern property line to see what can and can't be counted towards that type C buffer. With that being said, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Mr. Thweet is here if you have any questions for him. All right. Thank you, Mr. Baumley. Any questions for Mr. Baumley? I got a couple. Um, Mr. Baumley, did you note what we um, – man, that thing works. Um, the path of life on that north side there, I, it seems like I remember us talking about type C buffer, and then we also talked about a fence, and I, little, I don't remember – do you remember what we required of them on those boundaries? <laughs> You know, now now that I do, um, now that I think about it, uh, I know that that uh, I think we might have required a, a fence in addition to the buffer, but I, but I'm not positive. I didn't think to look that up, but I don't know if y'all. I remember talking about it, but I don't I don't really remember because I the neighbors had concerns on further to the west, and I think we we at least talked about a fence. And I was just curious it's, if, as far as being consistent what we did you know i i think there might have been a fence required along the uh western West property line abutting that, that uh the quail run subdivision i'm not sure if one was required along the northern property I line either not. i just wondered if you remembered that or had a chance to look that i, um, I wish i'd have thought to look that up um this access to northfield we're not anything we do is not going to say grace over that right that's correct okay. uh, that's something that they wish to do in the future but it's basically there for informational purposes but, right now okay um, and um, all the part is there sufficient parking on this first extension to meet the ratios on the yes sir they, they uh, for both phase one and phase two they'll they'll exceed their parking requirements that's all I had All right, if there are no other questions, then, Mr. Thweet, anything you'd like to add? Chairman Rogers, I have nothing further to add. Mr. Blomley, as always, uh, covers it very thoroughly, but I'm ready to answer any questions if you have any. Any questions? Going to get off easy today. Got it. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right, this time then we'll go ahead and conduct a public hearing. Anyone present wishing to speak for or against this application, if you would please come forward. Seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for any further discussions or motion. If there's no further discussion, I'll make a motion we approve the application subject to the two staff comments. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? I have a quick question. Um, Mr. Blomley, is there any – the Type C buffer is going to be on the north to the west between the church path of life. Is there any required minimum buffer that they're going to have to do? But since they're both zoned the same, there'd be no required buffer? Or how it, because it's like zoning, there's no buffer required unless, unless – uh, uh, the board requires a buffer. They show some trees, but it didn't look. Yeah. It would it would basically just be the regular uh, perimeter planting yard requirements along that uh, okay. along that western line. And, and I did not uh, uh, guide them to to install a buffer as I I thought with one use abutting right. the same use. Okay. Yeah. Just... Uh, Mr. Blomley, for information, uh, I note I know that the McKinley Place subdivision has a brick wall brick. Uh, fence all the way across the front of that property. Do you happen to know if there's any plan on that subdivision that they would extend that fence, the brick, uh, down the, the side of their subdivision? I not, don't recall from the plan. Not that I'm aware of. I, I think that was more of, a, of an entrance feature for privacy along the uh, along the roadway itself. All right. I would not want to require these folks to do a lot of landscaping and then have a brick wall put up right on the other side of it that effectively eliminates the need for it. So. Uh, to my knowledge, uh, there are no plans to extend that wall. Thank you. All right. 
Good questions. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, Mr. Sweet, that application has been granted. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to application Z10011 by Mr. Aaron Blankenship for Old South Patriotic, requesting a special use permit in order to operate a temporary outdoor vending establishment, seasonal fireworks retailer in a commercial highway zone. And this is for property located at the northeast corner of South Rutherford Boulevard and John Bragg Highway. Mr. Baumley, you review that one for us, please. Thank you, Chairman Rogers. Uh, this is the same location that, uh, that Mr. Blankenship has uh, had approved for uh, past four July 4th seasons, and he's requesting uh, only the July 4th fireworks season for this location. Uh, and I, I won't bother going through all of the details of the application as they mirror that of, of years past. Uh, you've got the, uh, the information in, the, in the, uh, your agenda packages. Uh, I will say that, that uh, we have had no complaints, to my knowledge, of this site. Uh, that the site did pass its, its initial property maintenance and uh, zoning inspections this year uh, and all appears to be in good order for Mr. Blankenship's site. Uh, I will mention that, uh, or I will, I will read off the, the seven conditions once that will be on all of the following uh, fireworks stands and I, and I won't bother reading those off again uh, for each one since they'll be the same. And I'll just, for each application where there are additional conditions that uh, that are being recommended by staff. I'll uh, I'll read those additional conditions for each for each application. But for this one item, I'll go through all of them. Uh, if the board approves this application, staff recommends the following conditions: uh, certification should be submitted that the tent is flame resistant or treated to be flame resistant. A fire extinguisher should be kept on site at all times. The city's fireworks ordinance should be posted on site. No fireworks are to be set off on site. All signage is to comply with the city's sign ordinance. The site must pass an electrical safety inspection prior to opening for business, and an electrical permit must be purchased from the Building and Codes Department in order to obtain this inspection. Uh, the tent must meet all minimum building setback requirements for the CH zoning district, and a tent permit must be obtained for the tent. And th those are the seven standard conditions that we recommend on all fireworks tents. And now the, th the three additional ones for this location. Uh, all grass and weeds growing up through the existing gravel must be removed and or killed as no grass surfaces are allowed for the placement of the tent and for vehicular travel slash parking. In addition, the applicant may need to add gravel and or smooth out the existing gravel surface subject to the approval of the planning staff. And uh, while Mr. Blankenship's site does not have any grass growing up through the gravel, this is one that periodically needs to be smoothed out because it does have some existing kind of large shot rock on it. Uh, so uh, you, most times Mr. Blankenship brings in a, a load of gravel for the parking area so that it, uh, it smoothed out a little bit. Uh, the northern access on South Rutherford Boulevard must be barricaded as well as the gravel drive coming, coming from the northern access as it intersects with the applicant's parking lot. And no, no vehicular access to John Bragg Highway will be allowed. Uh, with that being said, I'll be happy to answer any questions. And Mr. Blankenship is here if you have any questions for him. All right. Thank you, Mr. Blomley. Any questions for Mr. Blomley? I've got a quick one. Didn't this site have some ingress and egress issues we dealt with the, before those were taken care of, I assume? Vice Chairman Young, the first year that Mr. Blankenship made application, uh, our traffic engineer had concerns about the ingress and egress for this site. As you know, there's a, there's a median right there, and I'll show you the uh, aerial photograph. Here's the site here. The actual access into the site, there's a, a median and that left turn going on to John Bragg Highway from South Rutherford Boulevard. So it's basically a right in, right out only into the site. Uh, Mr. Balachandra observed the site the first year and found that, it, that ingress, egress did operate smoothly for this site. And, uh, and we, have never, we have not had any complaints since this site began operating. So I think it's proven over time that uh, that has not been an issue as we, as we first suspected it might be. And the gravel is grandfather. I mean, yes, this is one of the one of the uh, gravel sites that are grandfathered in. All right, thank you, Mr. Blomley. Mr. Blanky, should be anything you'd like to add to the application? Not unless you guys have any questions. Okay, any questions for Mr. Blanky? If not, then we'll go ahead and conduct a public hearing. Anyone present wishing to speak for or against this application, if you would please come forward. 
Seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for any further discussions or a motion. Do you want to hear the seven uh, conditions read again? <laughs> I'll be happy. I'm okay with them. I'll move we approve the conditional use permit with uh, subject to all ten of the staff comments. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, Mr. Blankenship, that, that uh, application has been approved. Appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> we are really looking forward to that. <laughs> All right, we will move on to application Z10012, Mr. Jake Lloyd for Mid America Distributors, requesting a special use permit uh, in order to operate a temporary outdoor vending establishment, a seasonal fireworks retailer, in a commercial highway zone for property located at 1266 Northwest Broad Street, Mr. Blomley. Thank you, Chairman Rogers. Uh, this is the fireworks tent that we've seen, let's see, a number of years now. Uh, from 1990 through 2009, except for 2007, due to the Arby's construction. So uh, the applicant has had a tent uh, approved here at this location for a number of years. And on the overhead now, the tent is located here in this area of the parking lot. Uh, you can tell this photograph is a little bit dated as there is currently an Arby's here. Uh, the, uh, the site meets all the, uh, appears to meet all of the requirements in Section 9. Um, one of the things I will clarify is that uh, uh, you'll notice in bold I had uh, a comment about how it was not clear how the applicant was providing power to the site this year, and he has contacted me and stated that he'll provide power off of the, uh, off of the existing Kmart sign. So with that being said, all other uh, standards uh, appear to be met. Uh, the standard seven conditions that I read before that I'll be happy to read again if you like would be applicable in this instance as well. Uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Mr. Lloyd is here for this in the next six, acts of, six applications after this. All right. Thank you, Mr. Blomley. Any questions for Mr. Blomley? So these aerials aren't shot the morning of our meeting. Is there not a plane that goes out and gets these? Normally fresh. I do that. I take my airplane out and, and shoot say. those. But, yeah. but uh, I had to rely on the 2007 city aerial photography. Very good. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mr. Blomley. Any, or, uh, Mr. Lloyd, anything you'd like to add to the application? No, sir. All right. Uh, then at this, any questions for Mr. Lloyd? Okay. Then at this time, we'll go ahead and conduct a public hearing. Anyone present wishing to speak for or against this application, if you would please come forward. And seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for any further discussions or a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve the application with the seven conditions men met. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. That one has been granted. We'll move on to the next one. Application Z10013 by Mr. Jake Lloyd for Mid America Distributors, requesting a special use permit in order to operate a temporary outdoor vending establishment, a seasonal fireworks retailer, in a commercial fringe zone for property located at 2061 Las Casas Pike. Mr. Bombay. Thank you, Chairman Rogers. Uh, this is the third year this, the applicant has made uh, a special use permit request for fireworks sales at uh, this location, 2061 Las Casas Pike, which is the, uh, you can see on the overhead, is the, uh, the Food Lion Shopping Center on uh, uh, Las Casas Pike, just north of uh, East Northfield Boulevard. Uh, the applicant typically will set up here towards the front of the parking lot along the Las Casas Pike side of the development. And uh, uh, one of the things that I will mention is that the applicant is, is basically um, just a hair over 250 feet from the, uh, from the uh, Japanese restaurant that is uh, on this side of the building. And he's about a hair over 250 feet from the uh, Mexican restaurant on uh, the Chilango is on uh, just to the north of the building. So uh, he two years ago found a way to, to, to work that tent in to meet the minimum requirements. So I just want to make sure it gets on record that as it's uh, proposed and as he set it up the last two years, he does meet that minimum requirement. Uh, this site uh, does once again appear to meet all of the standards set forth in uh, Section 9 of our zoning ordinance. Uh, uh, the application is essentially identical to last year's. Uh, the applicant um, uh, 
uh, will only be is only requesting the July 4th time frame and he's passed his uh, initial uh, codes and, and zoning inspections and the seven standard uh, conditions would be applicable to this location as well I'll be happy to answer any questions All right, thank you mr. Blumley. any questions for mr. Blumley? All right, Mr. Lloyd, anything you'd like to add to this one? You're going to have to add something to one of these here somewhere along the way. Okay, all right, good. We're very excited. Uh, all right, then if there's uh, no questions for Mr. Lloyd, we'll go ahead and open the public hearing. Anyone present wishing to speak for or against this application, if you would please come forward. Seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for any further discussions or motion. I'll make a motion to approve the application subject to the seven staff comments. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. That application has been granted. Uh, we'll move next to application Z10014 by Mr. Jake Lloyd for Mid America Distributors requesting a special use permit in order to operate a temporary outdoor vending establishment, a seasonal fireworks retailer, and a commercial highway zone for property located at 2441 through 2449 Old Fort Parkway. Mr. Blomley. Thank you, Chairman Rogers. Uh, this is the second year that Mr. Lloyd has made a request for this location. It's the, uh, the Kroger Shopping Center, also known as Stone Trace Commons along the west side of Kaysom Lane, just south of Old Fort Parkway. Uh, the applicant, is, as I'll show you here, uh, found a location on this site here in this uh, seldom used parking area uh, directly across the driveway aisle from, uh, from the former Ritter's Frozen Custard location and uh, just to the south of the Green Bank here. Uh, one of the things that, uh, that we noted last year was that this driveway is sometimes used by Green Bank and its customers. Um, and uh, so it's, that's one less uh, means of ingress in and out of the uh, Green Bank site. We did not have any complaints about this last year, and uh, I remember working with Mr. Lloyd on this last year. He uh, made numerous attempts to contact Green Bank to, uh, to get their input on, on him you know, closing that access and, uh, because the tent will actually essentially take up most of that, of that uh, asphalt area uh, and that parking that... Uh, that it's kind of overflow parking for uh, for Green Bank, although it's on the Stone Trace Commons lot, and uh, uh, Green Bank never uh, uh, never contacted Mr. Lloyd back to uh, to give him their input on that. But he did make a good faith effort last year to contact them, and as I mentioned, we did not have any complaints with regards to uh, uh, to the location of that tent last year during the Fourth of July selling season. Uh, the applicant is making application for only the Fourth of July selling season for this location and uh, appears to meet all the, uh, the standards set forth in the zoning ordinance. He's passed his initial inspections, and I'll be happy to answer any questions if, uh, that, that you may have. And uh, once again, Mr. Lloyd is here. All right, thank you, Mr. Blomley. Any questions for Mr. Blomley? Right, Mr. Lloyd, any, is this the one you'd like to add something to? Really, it was the next one, but they didn't contact me afterwards either and uh, with any complaints or anything. Okay. All right. Chairman Rogers, I, I did forget to mention there is an additional, an eighth condition uh, that staff is recommending, and that is the applicant must install a barricade at the access point from the bank site into the subject parking lot for the entire time that the tent is in place. And the reason for that is, is we don't want any of the bank traffic uh, coming into the small amount of, uh, of uh, parking or ingress, egress that will be available where the tent will be set up and then realizing that they have to turn right around and kind of create kind of an awkward situation. Uh, there. So, with that being said, that's those are all my comments for that for that application. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Blomley or Mr. Lloyd? If not, then we'll go ahead and, and uh, open the public hearing. Anyone present wishing to speak for or against this application, if you would please come forward. And seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for any further discussions or a motion. Chairman Rogers, I'll make a motion. We approve the application. Subject to all staff comments and conditions. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, Mr. Lloyd, that application has been granted. We'll move next to uh, application 
Z10015 by Mr. Jake Lloyd from Mid America Distributors, requesting a special use permit in order to operate a temporary outdoor vending establishment, a seasonal fireworks retailer, in a commercial highway zone. And this is for property located at the northeast corner of Memorial Boulevard and Airport Road. Mr. Bonley. Thank you, Chairman Rogers. Uh, the site should look familiar as well as it's been approved for a seasonal fireworks tent from 1997 through 2009. And as you mentioned, it's on the uh, northeast corner of Memorial and Airport. It's a grandfathered gravel lot that's there right now. Uh, the applicant typically will set his tent here, and uh, has, there's usually ample parking available. Uh, in fact, uh, several years ago, the board required that he add a little bit more parking, uh, which he did several years ago. Uh, the uh, one of the things and I think I know what Mr. Lloyd will will be uh, will be coming up to talk about. One of the things that uh, staff mentioned to him was that uh, he only produced a lease for the July 4th selling season, and he's actually making a request for both the July 4th and the New Year selling seasons for this location. And so Mr. Lloyd has been attempting to get in contact with the owner, Mr. Huddleston, to produce a lease. Uh, for the New Year's selling season as well. Uh, and Mr. Lloyd has been av advised that if he does not have that lease for the New Year's selling season in hand, which I, I have not received uh, prior to the meeting, that uh, staff would recommend deferring action on this item until, uh, until that, that lease has been signed by both the applicant and the owner, as the applicant needs to have a, uh, uh, a contractual interest in a piece of property in order to uh, be granted a special use permit. Uh, and the same situation arose last year, and the applicant was able to get permission from uh, the owner in time for the meeting. Uh, but uh, I'm not sure whether or not uh, he has that in hand uh, today or not. And I'm sure Mr. Lloyd will uh, let us know the progress uh, uh, after I get done with my presentation as to whether or not he has received that uh, from Mr. Huddleston or not. But with that being said, this. Uh, uh, we have not received any complaints regarding this site in uh, in years past, to my knowledge. Uh, it is uh, these, this application is essentially identical to uh, how it's been operated in years past. Uh, and with that being said, staff, uh, if he has that documentation in hand, staff would recommend approval subject to the standard seven conditions as well as the condition that uh, that is listed with regards to the gravel travel surface. And with that being said, I'll be happy to answer any questions. And Mr. Lloyd is here as well if you have any questions for him. All right. Thank you, Mr. Blomley. Any questions for Mr. Blomley? All right. Mr. Lloyd. Well, as Mr. Blomley said, I uh, gave him a contract that we had for the summer but not the winter. And I have tried numerous times to call uh, Mr. Huddleston and um, emailed him and usually he's very easy to get hold of this time apparently he has a lot of meetings so I was not able to get that um, I was wondering if it might be granted uh, and it'd be contingent upon me getting that to if we could if we could set up there during the winter uh, obviously the summer is uh, presented all the proper paperwork but I just lack that one contractor agreement for the winter so I don't know if y'all can make that contingent or not but if you could it'd be great and hopefully I won't bother you anymore this year so if not I guess I'll have to bother you one more time I'd have to defer that to our legal counsel if, as to whether or not that would be sufficient standing in order for that to be approved I'm not sure there's a great difference between deferring action until he brings in the lease uh, or uh, granting the special use permit subject to him bringing in the lease. In either event, if he doesn't get the lease, uh, he doesn't have the permit. So uh, I, I think it would be at the board's pleasure on that. I think uh, either one would, should be, uh, would be legally sufficient. All right. Thank you, Mr. Ives. At this time, then, if there are any, unless there are any further questions, we'll go ahead and conduct a public hearing. Anyone present wishing to speak for or against this uh, application, if you would, please come forward. And seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for any further discussions or motion.
Um, Mr. Chairman, I'll move. Uh, we approve the special use permit subject to the eight listed staff comments with the additional uh, uh, requirement that for the winter um, permit that um, the applicant is to produce to staff the uh, proper um, lease agreement on property. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Uh, that application has been granted. We'll move on to application Z10016 by Mr. Jake Lloyd for Mid America Distributors requesting a special use permit in order to operate a temporary outdoor vending establishment, a seasonal fireworks retailer, in a commercial local zone. This is for property located at the southeast corner of South Rutherford Boulevard and East Main Street. Mr. Blomley, if you'd review that one, please. Thank you, Chairman Rogers. Uh, this is another location that uh, Mr. Lloyd has had approved for several years. In fact, from uh, 2005 to 2009, it's uh, an existing gravel lot grandfathered in at the uh, corner of East Main Street and South Rutherford Boulevard. A uh, small portion of the lot is paved, but the majority of it is, is gravel. Um, the uh, site is essentially the same. The, the, uh, the proposal is essentially the same as in years past. Uh, the uh, additional conditions that staff would recommend are that uh, uh, the one that's been on several of the other previous applications with regards to uh, the gravel travel surface and as well as uh, number nine, uh, no vehicular access will be allowed to South Rutherford Boulevard, and that's kind of a belts and suspenders uh, condition. Uh, the applicant does not propose any, but we just uh, like to include that just for uh, belts and suspenders. I like using cliche phrases sometimes, as Mr. Young well, well knows. Uh, with that being said, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Uh, Mr. Lloyd is in attendance if you have any questions for him. All right, thank you, Mr. Blomley. Any questions for Mr. Blomley? Uh, Mr. Lloyd, anything you'd like to add to this one? And at this time, we'll go ahead and conduct a public hearing. Anyone present wishing to speak for or against the application, if you would please come forward. Seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for any further discussions or a motion. Make a motion that we approve the application subject to all staff comments and conditions. Even the bill is suspended. Oh, yes, sir. Especially in I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, Mr. Lloyd, that application has been granted. Uh, we, we're going to take a quick five minute or so break here just to uh, unwind from all these fireworks. And, and we'll be back in about five minutes. Is that <laughs> All right, uh, we'll come back to order and uh, we'll next consider application Z10017 by Mr. Jake Lloyd from Mid America Distributors requesting a special use permit in order to operate a temporary outdoor vending establishment, a seasonal fireworks retailer, in a commercial highway zone for property located at the southeast corner of Southeast Broad Street in Kensington Square Court. Mr. Blomley. Thank you, Chairman Rogers. Uh, the subject property, as you mentioned, is at the corner of Broad and Kensington Square. We'll show the overhead on that. It's a rather large vacant lot there right next to the Dollar General. Uh, the applicant has set up here for a number of years in the past, uh, in fact, from 2001 through 2009. Uh, I know several years ago, and I bring this up every year, although I don't, uh, this is not something that we get complaints upon every, about every year, but uh, we had 
letters from several neighbors and adjacent subdivisions complaining that fireworks had, were being shot off near the sales site, uh, but we did not receive any compl complaints to that effect in 2009. And Mr. Lloyd uh, always reiterates to his sales staff that none are to be set off on site. Uh, it may be the fact that people are buying them and then taking them to nearby properties and setting them off. But Mr. Lloyd uh, is well aware of the, of the requirements about none being set off on site. Uh, the site did pass its uh, initial inspections, and the setup is essentially the same as in previous years. Uh, and the only uh, additional conditions to the seven main conditions are the one about uh, the gravel travel surface and that no vehicular access will be allowed to Southeast Broad Street. And with that being said, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Right, thank you, Mr. Bomley. Any questions for Mr. Bomley? Mr. Chairman, I don't have any questions, but this is the one that I don't Every year I abstain from voting or speaking of this, folks sit on this clients of mine. I don't have any actual conflict with the application, but I do work for the owners and have a relationship with them, so I won't be participating in this application. All right, uh, Mr. Lloyd, anything you'd like to add to this application? Yes, sir. And at this time we'll go ahead and open the public hearing. Anyone present wishing to speak for or against this application, if you would please come forward. Seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for further discussions or a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve the application with the uh, conditions set by the staff. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, that application has been granted and we will now consider the last one for Mr. Lloyd, application Z10018 by Mr. Jake Lloyd from MidAmerica Distributors requesting a special use permit in order to operate a temporary outdoor vending establishment, a seasonal fireworks retailer in a commercial highway zone for a property located at 2510 South Church Street. Mr. Blum, if you'd review that one for us, please. Thank you, Chairman Rogers. Uh, this is another site that Mr. Lloyd has had approved for a number of years. It's located at the southeast corner of, uh, excuse me, southwest corner of South Church Street and Warrior Drive. It's uh, uh, the gravel portion of the lot which houses uh, Bubba's Wine and Liquors and Bubba's Discount Tobacco. And uh, the applicant seeks to use this property in the same fashion that he has used it in previous years. Uh, the application does not deviate from that. Uh, this site was approved from 1996 through 2002 and from 2005 to the pre till 2009. Uh, the applicant is just making uh, a request for the July 4th selling season and he has passed his initial inspections. One thing that I will uh, mention about this particular site, we've got uh, the next application on the agenda which is for produce sales uh, on the same property and the uh, two applicants' calendars uh, do not conflict. Uh, Mr. Sims, who uh, is making the request for the produce sales, his, uh, his business will be taking a break um, during, uh, on the subject property uh, during the time period that Mr. Uh, Lloyd's tent will be on site. So there will be no conflict between the two businesses, much the same as there was last year, uh, no conflict. With that being said, staff recommends uh, if, there, if this item is approved that the uh, seven conditions be uh, be, uh, be made uh, part of the approval as well as the additional condition regarding the uh, gravel travel surface. I'll be happy to answer any questions uh, that you may have before or after the public hearing. All right. Thank you, Mr. Blomley. Any questions for Mr. Blomley? All right. Mr. Lloyd, anything you'd like to add to this one? Um, not much. Just I appreciate y'all's help and thanks for hearing me out and hopefully I'll be out of your hair until next year. <laughs> Thank you to Mr. Blomley. All right. Thank you, Mr. Lloyd. Any questions for Mr. Lloyd? And at this time, we'll go ahead and conduct a public hearing. Anyone present wishing to speak for or against this application, if you would please come forward. And seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for any further discussions or a motion. I'll make a motion that we approve the application subject to all staff comments and conditions. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, Mr. Lloyd, those all your applications have been approved. I appreciate the, the good work that you've done and uh, keeping the properties up to cleanliness and uh, up to standards. So thank you and look forward to seeing you again. 
All right, uh, we'll next move to application Z10019 by Mr. Alton Sims, requesting a special use permit in order to operate a temporary outdoor vending establishment, produce sales, in a commercial highway zone. And this is for property located at 2510 South Church Street. Mr. Blomley. Thank you, Chairman Rogers. As I mentioned with the uh, previous application, uh, this is the same property that was just approved for uh, seasonal fireworks sales. Uh, Mr. Sims made application to the Board of Zoning Appeals last year for a special use permit for temporary vending. He has a produce sales business, and uh, as you know, our, our zoning ordinance limits the amount of days that uh, temporary vending can occur on one piece of property to 70 days. Uh, uh, once we subtract the eight days, that is the July 4th selling season, which Mr. Lloyd was just approved for, uh, that leaves 62 days on any property. That those 62 days, as you know, do not have to be uh, a continuous 62 days. Uh, it can be uh, staggered, and, and, and this is what Mr. Sims did last year. He, he submitted a calendar with his application uh, denoting the days that, that he is uh, seeking permission to set up, and that calendar has been, uh, is, has been included in your agenda materials. Uh, the applicant, um, his setup will be essentially the same as last year, and if we could see the overhead. The gravel portion of Bubba's lot is, uh, is where his clients and, his, uh, and he will park, uh, or where his clients will park. He'll actually park his own truck and trailer back here on the, uh, towards the rear of the Bubba's building, which is, uh, which is a paved parking area. Uh, Mr. Sims would uh, put up two pop-up tents at most and keep his inventory underneath those, those pop-up tents. Of course, those pop-up tents would have to meet the minimum 42-foot setback requirement, and Mr. Sims is aware of that. And uh, uh, to my knowledge, we did not have any complaints about the, uh, the operation of this site last year. Um, and one of the things that staff has conveyed to Mr. Sims is that the uh, tents, as long as they're not together and exceeding the 120 square feet, uh, he will not have to get a, a tent permit from the Building and Codes Department. Mr. Sims' days of operation are primarily on the weekends. Uh, he has mostly Saturdays and Sundays outlined, and then um, in the summer months he has some Fridays as well. Uh, and Mr. Sims will be uh, bound by this calendar. There was some a few days that um, that he came to me beforehand last year and asked to switch around, and because he did that beforehand, we were able to accommodate him, and I approved that administratively. Uh, because he was not increasing the number of days, he was merely switching around some days. Um, and he would uh, like to be approved for operation of his produce vending business beginning on April 17th and ending on October 31st. Uh, he would just be there during daylight hours so there would be no, uh, no electricity needed on site. Um, and uh, as I mentioned, uh, just daylight hours, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. would be his, would be his uh, operating hours. He has received uh, approval from, uh, from uh, Barbara Hudson Fry, the, uh, uh, one of the owners of the property, to use the, uh, the Bubba's restrooms, uh, the Bubba's uh, uh, tobacco and, and uh, beer and wine uh, restrooms there uh, on site for him and his customers. And uh, he appears to uh, meet all of the uh, standards in, in uh, Section 9 of our zoning ordinance. And as I mentioned, the uh, setup of this operation will be uh, uh, nearly identical to, uh, to that of last year. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Uh, Mr. Sims is present if you have any questions for him. All right. Thank you, Mr. Blomley. Any questions for Mr. Blomley? Are there are no questions, Mr. Sims. Anything you'd like to add to the application? Okay. Uh, then at this time, we'll go ahead and conduct a public hearing. Anyone present wishing to speak for or against the application, if you would please come forward. Seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for any further discussions or motion. Sure, I move for uh, approval of special use permit subject to the staff comments. I'll second. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Mr. Sims, that application has been granted. Thank you very much. Appreciate you being here today. All right, we'll move on to application Z10020 by Mr. Winthrop Smith, requesting a special use permit in order to operate a temporary outdoor vending establishment.
produce sales in a commercial highway zone for property located at 106 Barfield Crescent Road. Mr. Bomley. Thank you, Chairman Rogers. Uh, this site has never been approved for a temporary vending establishment in the past. Uh, it's the property that's located uh, at the uh, northwest corner of uh, South Church Street and Barfield Crescent Road. It's currently home to uh, what's commonly known as the WT's Market. Uh, there uh, on the corner is owned by uh, Mr. Wendell Jones. Uh, property is zoned CH Commercial Highway, which does permit up to 70 days of temporary vending approved by special use permit each year. And the applicant, uh, much like uh, Mr. Sims, has a, uh, a business selling produce and uh, plants. I think he's specified in his, um, in his uh, application that he sells produce, tropical plants, and hanging baskets. Uh, the applicant would like to be approved for a period beginning on April 1st and ending on September 4th. And he has uh, submitted a calendar as well, much like uh, uh, Mr. Sims, and you can see that um, that Mr. Smith's days are uh, primarily Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. He has uh, secured permission from uh, the current operator of the gas station, uh, Mr. Jones. Although he owns the property, he no longer operates the gas station, so he has secured permission from uh, the owner of the gas station for the use of the gas station restrooms for him and his customers, as well as use of, use of the, uh, the dumpster uh, that's on the gas station property as well for the uh, disposal of, of refuse in the, in the course of his temporary vending business. Uh, Mr. Jones, or Mr. Excuse me, Mr. Smith has submitted uh, uh, materials uh, uh, addressing sections eight and nine of our zoning ordinance and the standards for, uh, for temporary vending. Uh, he has stated that his proposed hours of operation will be from 8 a.m. until 7 p.m., and he will have no need for uh, electricity. He has stated that he will be driving to the site each morning, hauling a trailer with the merchandise, and he will unload the merchandise each morning, and the trailer will be removed from the site each day after unloading. Uh, any remaining inventory will be removed from the site at the end of each business day, as will anything else having to do with the vending business. Uh, no tents will be utilized in the operation of the proposed business. Uh, Mr. Uh, Smith intends on uh, setting up uh, an area at the front of the lot, which I'll go over with you in just a moment, at the, right at the corner, and uh, uh, he would not have any structures associated with, with the vending business, uh, just um, basically an area of the parking lot that he would use to display his product and uh, have room for him to man that area as well. Uh, as I mentioned, um, the area is at the southeast corner of the subject property. And you can see here is the gas station building itself, and this T-shaped structure is the gasoline canopy. Uh, the applicant would like to set up in this area right here. The applicant has identified this portion of the parking lot here as his display area, and it would be an area 10 feet wide uh, stretching from Barfield Crescent to South Church Street. Uh, one of the things that's not shown on the site plan, on the original site plan, but I've penciled it in on the drawing, is that there is a driveway here that leads into the, uh, into the site from Barfield Crescent Road. And one of the things that staff is concerned about and that we have um, uh, recommended a condition uh, regarding is actually scaling back the area so that there is additional room uh, so that cars are not caught and having to back at, or car, car, cars are not caught in this uh, pinch point right here and are forced to back up into the public right of way of Barfield Crescent Road. As you know, that's a, that's a fairly well-traveled road. Um, and what we don't want to have happen is some negative effects from the vending business spilling out onto the public street. So what we are uh, uh, recommending is that the applicant will be required to keep all parts of his vending operation a minimum of 40 feet from the easternmost access point, which is what I've denoted right here, uh, access drive from Barfield Crescent Road into the site at all times. And one of the concerns that, that we've had that, uh, that it's going to take some management on the part of the applicant to, uh, to, to uh, 
to curb this potential issue is the fact that there are no actual parking spaces adjacent to uh, the inventory display area. And we put the overhead back up. What we have is um, all the parking for the site is uh, adjacent to the building on both the uh, on, on three sides of the building, and uh, counting the parking spaces under the gas pumps, which people uh, traditionally use as parking spaces, uh, he will not exceed more than 25 percent of the of the uh, parking on site, which is the maximum allowed. Um, uh, parking that his operation can take up on an existing site. However, what he is going to be tasked with is keeping folks from parking adjacent to the actual display area. What they're going to need to do is, is, uh, is park adjacent to the building and walk through the parking lot to get to the display area, which, um, uh, which the applicant will need to be able to make sure that he does manage that effectively. Because this area, while it's a wide uh, driveway aisle adjacent to the gasoline canopy, it's uh, it's some it, even with his 10 feet of display area, uh, there will be a, I believe 30 or 35 feet of driveway aisle left over in between his display area and the uh, and the canopy. Uh, we still don't want cars stacking up, creating a a, a, a bottleneck there, especially as it relates to uh, to the driveway onto Barfield Crescent Road. Uh, with that being said, uh, the board may want to discuss different types of different options um, for uh, for uh, delineating the display area, and so that cars are not um, uh, cars. The driveway aisle and the display area are kept separately, and this may be done uh, via uh, cones or some type of uh, uh, you know temporary fencing, you know the orange construction fencing, and he'll he'll have to put this. Uh, Put this up and take it down every day, um, but you know there's going to have, have to be some type of physical barricade or separation between the driveway aisle of the gas station and the uh, the display area. One of the things that you'll notice in the uh, staff comments was that the applicant uh, or the location failed the initial property maintenance inspection. Uh, Mr. Smith did get the site cleaned up, and uh, the site has now passed uh, its its initial property maintenance inspection. Uh, if the board approves this application, staff recommends the following conditions. Uh, the time period of operation will be from April 1, 2010 until September 4, 2010 on the days indicated on the submitted calendar. Uh, number two, an appropriate barrier to, to, to delineate the sales area from the adjacent driveway aisle must be in place at all times during business hours. Uh, the applicant is to direct all customers to park in the line spaces adjacent to the building. And number four, the applicant will be required to keep all parts of his vending operation a minimum of 40 feet from the easternmost access drive from Barfield Crescent Road into the site at all times. And in scaling out the plan, that still leaves him uh, about a 60-foot wide area um, closer to South Church Street, but where there's uh, less of a conflict with, with, with existing uh, drives into the site. With that being said, I'll be happy to answer any questions that the board may have. Uh, Mr. Smith is here, available for any questions as well. All right, thank you, Mr. Bomley. Any questions for Mr. Bomley? All right. Um, Mr. Smith, anything you'd like to add to this application, sir? Uh, no, sir. Uh, I, I didn't know about the problem, but that won't be an issue for the barrier. If you can come forward to the podium so we can catch your... Um, comments on the record here. I think Matthew was stating that the uh, would, would need to be 40 feet away from the uh, the driveway. Uh, that's not an issue. Well, I can purchase cones or whatever sort of barrier he could recommend for me. The, the orange construction thing, and I will take that down every day. I've owned a nursery in Shelbyville, Tennessee, and and uh, just to give you just a quick history that I'm not a fly-by-nighter uh, to come in here and just to sell produce and hanging baskets. Bedford County gave us gave my company the uh, beautification award because we do a nice fine job keeping things clean and straight but I do understand that there may be an issue about this parking but uh, I, I will direct the customers to the uh, to the to the location that the uh, owner is has stated for that but uh, if you have any more questions I'll be free to ask. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Any questions for Mr. Smith? 
Thank you, sir. At this time, then, we'll go ahead and declare the public hearing open. Anyone present wishing to speak for or against this application, if you would please come forward. And seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for any further discussions or motion. Uh, Matthew, have you talked to um, traffic about what they might propose, or have we talked about that at all? I did, Mr. Dodd, and uh, if it would please the board, I've got some, some photographs that, I would, that I'd like to show the board. None of your trip to Gatlinburg, are they? <laughs> Let's keep them on, to on topic. <laughs> well... Nothing it's the escort surrounded by cones. <laughs> <laughs> As it should be. Nothing gets me off topic quicker than my beautiful car. <laughs> oh, and what you know, there it is. <laughs> this kind of shows you the area that, that Mr. Smith is looking to set up in. This is kind of taken from that, that entrance onto Barfield Crescent Road. Uh, I think what Mr. Uh, Balachandra what his concern was was that, you know, of course, the negative impact that it could have on the public street. And so that driveway, which is right here, um, 40 feet in from that driveway would be a two car lengths so that if someone did pull into the, to the parking lot and uh, uh, you know, used that as a parking space. If there were two cars parked there, that would keep two car lengths inside the site um, if someone were to to park there, which, uh, you know, of course, Mr. Smith, you know, he's, he says he's going to control that, but, it, you know, that may be, may be difficult if he's got several things that he's juggling um, on site. But uh, Mr. Balachandra wanted that 40 feet for two car lengths so that, so that there was enough space to, uh, to at least accommodate a couple cars uh, without backing into the public street. The parking that's on the, and then as I mentioned, this is gonna be key. The parking that's on the, uh, the west side of the building, there are a number of spaces on the west side of the building that are, that are seldom used. And uh, this is the area that, uh, that Mr. Smith uh, envisions directing his customers to park in, um, and hopefully he'll be able to, he'll be able to accomplish that. Uh, you just, is, when we say he's directing them, is he going to have signage, or did, did, is that somebody to ask him? Have y'all talked about directing, or is he just me? We, we've talked about different options, uh, and I and I contacted Miss um, Kerr about the possibility of him having some signage up there, um, and I think that directional signage. Um, that he would use on a daily basis would uh, uh, refresh my memory, Mr. Kerr. How would that be uh, regulated? Um, is it two and a half square feet? Can he keep it on the lot um, throughout the duration of the time that he's there? Okay. Uh, if if, uh, if any of you didn't hear that, Ms. Kerr said that uh, that two and a half square foot um, directional signage could be used, and that could be used for the duration of the uh, the time period that he's approved for. Is there a limit on the on the number that he could have, Ms. Kerr? So he could actually have several on site, um, you know, and he could adhere it to uh, his cones or his or his construction fencing. Yeah, and I'm familiar with the site. Um, the my biggest concern is what I've found is there's a lot of traffic on this. Church Street side of these pumps coming between Barfield, that area is used a lot as a cut through, as a pathway. And so if we take 40 foot and 10 feet and then we add a bottleneck here and there, I would, you know, if we were going to do something, I would think signage rather than mitigating it after the fact because he's waiting on a customer and somebody pulls in, next thing somebody else pulls in, all of a sudden you got five cars here and he's got a big bottleneck there because there is a lot of through traffic I think on this highway here between those two so I was trying to envision how we might number one delineate the sales area and two 
um, make it clear to those, you know, folks pulling in, uh, kind of be proactive, I guess is what I'm saying. Not wait till they park and say, hey, you need to move your car, but kind of have something there saying, hey, you need not park here, you need to go over there. I think, I think, uh, I he'd, be, he'd be well advised to, to follow that. Cone, and you think, I guess cones or any kind of marking would do that. Okay. But traffic's concern is this 40 foot over here, is that right? Yes. I think the, uh, the actual ingress, egress point from South Church Street is actually a, uh, a good a good ways away to the north of his display area, um, so there's an, there's enough separation from that that driveway. If, if, if the owner wanted to do this, is this something the owner could do as a matter of right without any kind of a special use permit? No, no. It um, what the owner does not have. Uh, it, to my knowledge, he does not manage the or does not operate the gas station. So, if he was uh, if he was uh, independently operating a, a produce business in front of the in front of the gas station that was not accessory to the gas station, then he would have to come before the board for a special use permit. Okay. So, the fact that, that if if this was a lessee or the owner, whoever was operating the gas station, if if that's who applied for the permit to do the same thing that he's doing because it's not accessory to the gas station use, then they would be required to come get a special use permit. That's correct. And I, th I think back to like Lowe's and Home Depot when they started acquiring and accumulating these <coughs> fenced in areas of nursery supplies and, and you know mulch and bags of everything out there in their parking lots. and. The city, I think, sent them some sort of notice they needed to clean all that stuff up because they could not have it, I guess, taking up parking, and uh, there were probably other reasons why that was impermissible. That's correct. Um, the difference between um, that application and this app, or between those sites and this site, is that that the, the outdoor storage on those sites is accessory to the main business. Uh, if they have those areas approved on their site plan, um, and that's the sales of that uh, of that merchandise, the mulch and the plants, is accessory to their business as it is with Lowe's. If they have their site plan uh, amended to to take into consideration certain areas that are meant for outdoor display of inventory, then that's allowed by right. Uh, much would be the same case if the operator of the gas station, in this instance, were to say. Hey, I want to amend my site plan to uh, to allow. You know, I, I want to uh, sell uh, produce and plants in addition to the things that I sell inside the convenience market. Then it would be a matter of him coming in and amending the site plan, um, uh, and he would be allowed to do so by right uh, if that amended site plan was approved. Uh, but someone who is operating a uh, a produce sales business that is not accessory to the convenience market on site would fall into the category of having to get a special use permit. And his use of the parking lot in a manner that's not consistent with the site plan approval, if the board approves the special use permit, uh, then uh, that's essentially, uh, that's what would need to be done for a, for a temporary vending special use permit for, the, for his use of the site as such. Because it's not a, it's not a permanent change to the, to the site as would be uh, and would be warranted by the accessory uses to the. Uh, uh, I'm kind of. I feel like I'm. I'm saying a whole lot. Am I? Am I making sense? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. I'm with you. I mean, it has to be accessory to the to the use. It has to be originally part of the plan, part of the what was approved by the planning commission and uh, permitted that way. Yes. Otherwise, it's going to be. If it's not accessory, then it wasn't originally permitted. Then it's going to be required a special use permit. That's correct, and that, and that's 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 the key that we look at when someone is going, is trying to determine whether or not they need a special use permit. Is is it accessory to the main business, or is it not accessory to the main business? Okay. Can you put the first picture up there that you showed us, the one with the escort? Sure. <laughs> Glad. Which one? <laughs> Uh, 
I, I think it's in that picture. It's something I want, I've moaned about in the past, and I'm moaning about it a little bit more, is that this is right across 231 from South Branch Nursery. And, and uh, you, you're, I know this has been an issue that's come before mo recently, within the last 12, 18 months, the city council, um, about temporary vendors allowing them to come in and set up. And you're, they're directly competing with people that are brick and mortar, you know, with buildings and that sort of thing that have much more overhead. It makes it really difficult for, for those type of operations to compete with somebody that has virtually no overhead. Um, so uh, this, you know, I, I don't know if I've ever seen it as directly um, so close as as that is. I mean, just so so obvious. Anyway, um, I, I, I I I struggle with this one a little bit more because of the parking issue. I just don't think there's any way that they can control the, the parking situation to have customers park where they're supposed to park. Now, whether I, whether I'll vote against it or not, I'm still sitting fence on that one. But uh, uh, you know, this one's this one's close for me. Okay. If, I can, if I can speak, I believe. Uh, well, I, I, okay. Where Matthews or whoever's car that is is parked there. There's there's two uh, there's two parking spots there as well. Uh, I don't know if Matthew noticed that where he ended up parking there. It's 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 painted yellow. And they exist right there as well. So where that picture is, right in front in that curve right there, there's, there's, two, there's two parking spots as well right there. Uh, I will have the signs up um, for them to park on the other side. Now, I have worked it out with the leasee that that, that doesn't mean I necessarily ha they have to park unless I'm required those six spots on the other side of the building. The leasee is, is giving me permission to park were in, in front like if you turn in off south church street right there there's probably s seven parking spots or something like that and he's he's willing to give me those as well okay any further discussion <coughs> i think we do Mr. have smith I, I have a question for you have you had any conflict with this nursery that's right across the street from you, have they said anything to you? Or? Uh, no, ma'am. We're, yeah. we're actually friends. Dean Higby is the owner of South Branch Nursery, and we're, we're, we're friends as well, along with all his associates there that work for him. So, no, there's, I haven't heard of anything that uh, he hasn't said anything that there would be any kind of an issue as far as that goes. I've, uh, I used to sell Dean Higby <coughs> tropical plants back several years ago when I owned my own business in Shelbyville. And that's not one thing that, that's why I itemize my things that I'm going to sell on the application request for the tropical and the hanging baskets, because that's something that Dean does not sell that much of. He's more into the nursery stock and, and selling of the mulch. I won't have any mulch bags or anything like that. And it'll all be cleaned up each night. But uh, no, I haven't had any problems with Dean at all. Thank you. All right, I think we do have a motion in a second, right? Okay. Mm, no, I don't think so. We, haven't, we don't have a motion? No. Okay, we've, done, we've, we've already taken public hearing, closed the public hearing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did track there? Yeah. We did, okay. The official minute taker says yes. Mm -hmm. so I'm going to agree with her. I, I trust her. <laughs> <laughs> But we haven't had a meeting this long in a while, so we're all, about, <laughs> we're all out of our. You know. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, I, I guess you're right. We, we talked about any discussion or motion. I think we started on discussion. So, man, we'll, we'll continue on discussion, or we can have a motion now. All right, I'll, I'll give it a shot. I, I, I move that uh, we approve the special use permit with the one staff comment. In addition, I would like to uh, add the condition that uh, the sales area be delineated by uh, cones clearly marked with um, signage in, that is um, in compliance with the sign ordinance directing parking and line spaces only um, on the property. So that would be my motion. I'd like to make a comment too. I, I have the same reservations with respects to the in and out uh, 
and parking area and the placement of this temporary location. Uh, however, I'm not going to vote against it. Um, I think that it is something that I'd, I'd like staff also to pay close attention uh, because if Mr. Smith is going to come back next year. Um, you know, we want some sort of, I would like to have as part of this board, uh, kind of a report on how this thing worked because I, I do think that the, the placement, the location, um, uh, everything about it, there could be a problem uh, that Mr. Smith may or may not have any control over. Uh, but I'm willing to give it a try. I'll second the motion. Right. Yeah, I, I agree, Mr. Halbert. I, you know, like I said, I'm familiar with the spot. I'll be out at the spot. I, you know, I don't. I feel like, um, based on our history, that he, he served a chance on this. Uh, I'm concerned about the pass through traffic, um, and I, uh, you know, I hope it works well. And you know, I'm I'm going to be interested to see how how it goes as as I travel in that area myself. And Mr. Dodge, just to clarify, the uh, the recommended conditions of approval would essentially be uh, one through four as I've listed them, but uh, two and three would essentially be combined into one condition that the appropriate barrier that's that's uh, requested in, in condition number two would be uh, cones and that uh, uh, in addition to the applicant physically directing all customers to park in the line spaces adjacent to the building as is delineated in number three, that he would need signage uh, compliant with the sign ordinance, uh, doing so as well. Is that, is that fair to state? Yeah, I, I think as I see it, and and I was miss, I was misreading what the conditions that you were recommending. I was looking at. A previous application um, but as I look at these these four here I think the only I guess modification that I'm actually making in my motion is that this direction be by signage okay and you know I think the line spaces um, well, I was interested in making that you know part of the direction but I, I do think a proactive signage is going to be required because otherwise it's just going to be, I mean, I think that's the best you can do. I think otherwise it's just going to be chaos because people are going to pull up there unless they have some advanced direction not to do it. Got it. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, Mr. Smith, that application has been granted. All right, we'll move on to application Z10021 by Ms. Jennifer Richardson, requesting a special use permit in order to conduct a home occupation and artist studio at her residence located at 1903 Cypress Drive. The property is located in, in a residential single family RS10 zone. Mr. Baum, if you'd review that one for us, please. Yes, sir. Thank you, Chairman Rogers. The subject property is located along the north side of Cypress Drive. Here's an aerial photograph on the north side of Cypress Drive, uh, east of Minerva Drive, and uh, west of Olympia Place. Uh, the applicant is making uh, a request for a special use permit for a home-based business. Uh, she would like to conduct uh, an artist studio business and, and uh, teach art classes out of, uh, out of her uh, uh, detached accessory building, which is, as you can see here, is on the uh, northwest corner of the lot. I got my te technical difficulties there. Um, any type of special use permit 
that has customer traffic coming to and from it requires, or any type of home occupation that has a that has customer traffic coming to and from it requires a special use permit from the Board of Zoning Appeals. And in addition, uh, an artist studio is a uh, home-based business that is specifically require spe specifically permitted only by special use permit from the Board of Zoning Appeals. And so the applicant uh, came in to uh, pull a business license from our tax department. And upon making inquiry with the uh, planning department uh, with regards to her home-based business, uh, she was advised that uh, that the type of home-based business that she wanted to operate uh, requires a special use permit. I will mention, and, and the applicant's been forthcoming about this, is that she has been operating uh, her artist studio there uh, for several months, I believe, and uh, has been having uh, classes on site as well. And uh, in the staff comments, it advises her that that uh, if the Board of Zoning Appeals uh, does not approve this request, uh, then she would need to, uh, we've, we've, uh, we've held off enforcement actions um, and have, have not, uh, uh, have not uh, pursued that until after the Board of Zoning Appeals meeting, but uh, she's been advised in the staff comments that if the Board does not approve the request that she would need to cease um, operating of the artist studio and, and the classes there out of the uh, out of the home. But with that being said, she has made application to attempt to make the uh, artist studio uh, there at her at her residence legal, uh, and she has submitted materials uh, uh, addressing sections eight and nine of our zoning ordinance, uh, nine specifically being the standards that are required for uh, for home-based businesses, uh, and. Uh, uh, the applicant intends to hold classes on uh, weekday afternoons and on Saturday mornings. Uh, she states in her application that uh, class size will be limited to no more than eight students at one time. And uh, uh, after talking with the applicant, the, uh, the, the students that she has are, are children and she teaches them uh, you know, basic uh, art skills, uh, drawing, painting, things of that nature. Um, so they're not classes for, for adults per se, they're classes for, uh, for, for children and I believe they usually last 45 minutes to, to an hour. Um, one of the things that uh, the staff was concerned about was the, uh, the ability to adequately uh, provide ingress and egress and, and on-site parking for the, for the classes. And what I'd like to do now is show you the, uh, the aerial photograph once again. It's, her driveway is, is, is kind of somewhere in between a one-car and a two-car width driveway. Uh, it's actually 14 feet wide. It's uh, maybe wide enough for, for two escorts side by side, but, but uh, anything above a compact car, it's, usually, it's, it's, it's really just a, a one-car width driveway. Uh, but it is deep enough. It runs all the way back to the, uh, to the garage, and there's a back room in the garage, which is... Uh, where the home occupation would actually be conducted out of, and uh, so there, there is room enough in the garage to, or excuse me, in the uh, driveway to accommodate about three cars or so there in the in the front. And one of the things that that we've cons expressed concerns to Ms. Richardson about is that is that the parking for her for her clients and the uh, uh, and the drop off for her clients um, should be taking place. Now, although this is not mandated by the zoning ordinance, I know that it's typically something that, uh, that the board um, looks for is that, is that the, uh, the students uh, or the clients not be utilizing the public street for parking or for, uh, or for daycare. And, and what the zoning ordinance states is that uh, on-site, on off-street parking um, uh, as determined by the Board of Zoning Appeals um, should, be, should be required. And in this case, It'll be up to the board to determine uh, whether or not uh, what she has presented is is adequate. Um, one of the things that the board has the ability to do is she set a maximum number of students per class, as you've seen. But uh, the board has the ability to uh, condition <coughs> approval on a reduced number of students if it feels that the on-site parking uh, is not uh, is not adequate. Uh, with respect to the other standards in the zoning ordinance. Um, the home occupation is uh, prohibited from from exceeding 500 square feet if it is to be conducted entirely from within an accessory structure. 
and the area that she looks to devote to the artist studio is only 300 square feet. So that minimum requirement is met. Uh, the applicant has indicated that she will not have any employees and that she does not intend to have any type of signage for her home-based business. Uh, as I mentioned, the board has the ability to place reasonable conditions on a special use permit approval in order to help ensure the compatibility of the proposed use with the neighborhood. These conditions can include, among other things, limits on the number of students in a given class, times of classes, and accommodations for off-street parking. Uh, got some photographs of the site that I'd like to show you. This is the existing garage that the, uh, the applicant will be utilizing in the back room. You see there's a side door on the back room there. The, uh, uh, the applicant has stated that her, in her personal vehicle will either be parked inside the garage or in the back of the, uh, of the driveways that leave the front of the driveway available for, uh, for uh, uh, customer parking. And this is, you can see there's a, a separation in the roof line. This is the back of the, the building which will serve as the, as the, uh, the actual artist studio. This photograph is looking from the back of the driveway in front of that garage towards the, towards the street. And now just some photographs of surrounding property. That's looking on the property to the east, the backyard of the property to the east. That's looking to the north. Uh, the property is essentially surrounded on all, on all sides by uh, single family residential uses and zoning. This is the back parking area right in front of the garage. This is the front of the house. What I wanted to do in this photograph was kind of give you some perspective on how wide the driveway was. And see, there's my car right there. And these are just some photographs of the surrounding neighborhood that's looking east on the north side of Cypress Drive. This is looking west on the north side of Cypress Drive. That's the property directly to the west. And this is across the street. One thing I, I will mention is um, I did receive a call from the next door neighbor uh, who was unable to be here today. Uh, uh, and she told me that she was going to get me something in writing to distribute to the board members. Uh, she's the only person that, uh, that I've had any, any feedback from personally. Uh, the other planners in the office may have talked to other neighbors. Uh, I'm not certain of, of who all has called except for the one who contacted me. Uh, she said that she had some concerns about the existing traffic um, that with, uh, with uh, Ms. Richardson's current uh, classes that are going on. and. Uh, um, but that um, I told her to, to get me something in writing for the, for the board to review, and uh, uh, I never received anything from her. Um, but uh, she's the only person that I heard from uh, in the neighborhood. <coughs> With that being said, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Uh, Ms. Richardson is here if you have any questions for her as well. All right. Thank you, Mr. Blumley. Any questions for Mr. Blumley? Do you know where the caller lived? Yes. This is the applicant's property, and the house directly to the west is where the caller lived.
Chairman Rogers, I don't have any questions for Mr. Blomwood, but I do have questions for Ms. Richardson, if she could come to the podium. All right. How are you doing? Fine, thanks. Um, just in the summary here, uh, you're having classes weekday afternoons and on Saturdays. H how, how many different classes would you have on a weekday afternoon, and how many cl different classes would you have on a Saturday? Well, at the moment, I only have class for about six hours a week. Um, I have classes on um, late Monday afternoons, Wednesday afternoons, um, Friday afternoon, and then one class Saturday morning. So each Monday, Wednesday, and Friday would just be the one class, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, being that it's for 45 minutes in length, um, are the parents of these children usually staying? No. Uh, they're just dropping the kids off and leaving and coming back? And they often find it's a good time to go grocery shopping or to run some errands. Um, it's very rare for parents to stay. Occasionally, if I do, it's, it's like one parent who stays. So it's not very common. And they're welcome to use the garage. I've let them know that. Or, I'm sorry, the driveway. Um, in your application, you're asking for, I guess, all weekday afternoons for the possibility of having a class on uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, for example, that you're not utilizing right now, correct? Yeah, that's only with the case that um, I also teach college classes, and if my schedule was to change there, I might change the classes to Tuesday and Thursday. I don't have any plans to expand the classes at all. At the so moment. if we were to uh, agree with uh, uh, granting this um, special use permit, uh, at this point all you're looking for is uh, four different class times. Is that a correct statement? Mm -hmm. Okay. And where I'm going with that is to try to accommodate the number of trips that would be coming in and out of this residential area uh, versus just giving it a blanket of, in essence, you know, uh, six to ten to twelve different classes going on in any one six to seven day period of time. Yes, and I would like to say that a lot of my students are siblings, that um, especially with the larger class, I only have two classes that are eight students, and two to four of them will be siblings and brought either by one parent or they'll carpool with another parent. Any other questions for Ms. Richardson? Mr. Richardson, when you say afternoons, I guess I'd, I'd like to have a little more clarity on, I mean, what, what, what is it, what's your latest class that you have currently? When does it begin? And I guess you said they last 45 minutes to an hour, so we can figure why it might end from there. My latest class is on Mondays from 6 to 7, and that's to accommodate parents who are working and can't get there immediately after school. And I have um, four students in that class. And this is a once a week class, so you have different kids on each of these days. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry. Uh, so 7 p.m. would be what you would be asking to, to be allowed to operate until that late. Is that? Yeah, on that one day. And I might even change that class to earlier if, if that's needed. It's really just more to accommodate the parents. It's, it's not really for my benefit. Are, are the, currently, are the, are the parents parking in the street and then coming in, or are they all pulling? I'm just trying to get in my mind how the day goes with respect to the kids being dropped off and picked up? Oftentimes they'll pull into the driveway and walk their kids inside and then go out. Um, I have one or two parents who do tend to park on the street and they'll often stay in their car while we're having lessons, like they'll work on their paperwork. And that's not to say I have two parents for each class on the street, it's just throughout the week I'll have maybe two parents who do that. So you teach a college class? Yes. 
So you don't have them at your house, you go to the college to teach them? Yes, I teach at the Art Institute of Tennessee in Nashville. Okay. All right, well, if there are no other questions, thank you, Ms. Richardson. We'll go ahead and conduct a public hearing. Anyone present wishing to speak for or against this application, if you would, please come forward. And seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for any further discussions or motion. I'm trying to approach, I guess, the park, getting the cars off the street, and assuming the eight students is the largest class, maybe plan for that one. How many cars should we allow for, and how many parking spots do we think they can accommodate now? You know, I know there's different for different activities, there's different number of spaces required. I wonder how we approach for eight students. We need to accommodate two to three cars, four cars maybe, and I don't know if they have that at this point. Um, yeah, I think for eight, you have to assume at least six cars, wouldn't you? I mean, I don't. Yeah, I remember the Even. church. The church, for instance, is a pretty liberal use. There's one car for eight people or something like that, so it, it can vary. But I, yeah. that's kind of where I was trying to approach. Okay, if eight's the most, we need to accommodate those in her driveway somehow, or do something different. I mean, Mr. Blumley, has there been any suggestions made as to how to accommodate the drop-off and pick-up um, as part of your discussions with the applicant? Uh, I've discussed the possibility of, of reducing the, the class size so that you know, less cars would be, would be on site at one time, you know, dropping their, their children off. Um, you know, we've discussed other options involving um, improvements to the driveway to help get the vehicles on site um, but uh, um, I think as far as physical improvements Ms. Richardson wanted to see what you know, what the board's thoughts were with her existing driveway before before going the route of any physical improvements on site but when she asked about the the number of students um, you know what I, what I advise most applicants is to you know, a ask for what you want. You know, don't, don't. Um, you know, you know, ask for the number that you want to have, and then you know the board can always reduce it if it if it sees fit. Um, but you know, we just like what Mr. Ives always says, we advertise for a higher intensity, but you know it can be reduced, but it can't be. You know, for example, if she asked for four, she couldn't come here and say that she wanted eight. But if she asks for eight, then that can remain at eight or it can be scaled back. What if we just prohibited on street parking? I mean, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not saying necessarily I'm not proposing that. It's, I guess it's just. Mr. Plumley, do you know if this is an area where on street parking is allowed? Uh, without regard to this home occupation, just as a general rule, At, to my knowledge, there's nothing that that prohibits it as it prohibits general on street parking in the area. Um, and but just from the photographs, and here again, we you know it doesn't appear as though that seems to be the practice. In the I mean, you gave us some down the street shots. Yeah, I, I, I think I think it'd be good to avoid that. And I think that minimizes the impact on the neighbors, which is the other. Besides the safety impact, you got the neighbors is what I was kind of thinking. It may not be prohibited, but, you know, when you talk about that many cars uh, on a regular basis, um, every week, four times a week, seems to be it. Well, Mr. Dodd, what the uh, zoning ordinance actually says, and this is... Um, uh, standard number seven for home-based businesses is that there should be adequate provision for any traffic generated by such home occupation, including, uh, excuse me, including off-street parking if required by the BZA. So, I mean, I, I guess what I was saying before is that kind of uh, uh, allows the board some discretion in, in how they want to 
uh, regulate uh, parking for a, for a proposed home-based business. Minds. <laughs> I would agree with Mr. Dodd. I mean, as a, as accommodation to the neighbors, I don't think we need to have parking in the street. Um, and I think the applicant might can understand that. That being said, though, um, I'm not sure you can pull in two cars or three cars at a time in this driveway and people backing out, you know, without having the situation of on-street parking happening physically. I'm not sure it, it, that uh, driveway lends itself to other than having on-street parking, at least for some period of time. So my only comment would be is if we're not going to allow on-street parking, which I would agree with, is that some improvement, it just looks like to me some improvement's going to have to be made to the driveway in order to accommodate at least somebody being able to pull in and park uh, and then and then allow two other vehicles to come in and then at least all the drop off and pick up would happen in the driveway uh, and not be in a position to where it's happening on the street uh, I, I just I, I can't grasp how we're not going to make an improvement to this driveway and accommodate the drop off and pick up but I'm what about reduce, what if we reduce if we reduce well, the maximum class size? That I think hell, and, and I, I would I would it. leave that up to the applicant as to what direction she she would like for us to go in as to do you want to make an improvement to the driveway or do you want to reduce the class size? And I'm just speaking for myself here. No, I agree. The one thing I was saying if we just say no on street parking, then it'd be up to the applicant to ensure that she didn't have enough. She has enough traffic there to accommodate it without that on street parking. Was my first thought, but but I agree with you. I don't. If you have that class size, I mean, it's hard to imagine a scenario where there's not a bottleneck there. Um, so, I, I, before we get too far off on that, too, I, I, I kind of agree with your, I think, where you were headed on the three days a week. I think it would be a, the request is for weekday afternoons. I, you know, if we were to approve it and, and figure out the sparking thing, I'd, you know, I'd like to see us talk about num maximum number of afternoons, and then I'd also like to talk about, you know, latest hours, you know, go ahead and set some hours because, you know, the application is afternoon, but I don't really think of 7 o'clock at night as, as an afternoon. Um, but I guess before we get that far, we got to figure out how we, what, what comfort level we have on this parking. You can come on up, Mr. Richardson. I mean, I think he was asking you to weigh in on your preferences there. I would prefer not to change the driveway. Um, my students, because it is such a small class. Um, a lot of them will come, like some will come 10 minutes early, some will come five minutes early, some will come five minutes late. They aren't all getting there exactly at the same time. That's really kind of unusual. Um, we do have a turnaround area in our garage, like, or in, our, in the driveway area nearest the garage, so we could use that um, a little bit. I, I hadn't heard anything from my neighbors about complaints for parking. And again, the classes are very short. They're less than an hour long, usually. Um, but I'll be happy to, to make any accommodations if you feel necessary. If your personal cars weren't in the driveway, how many do you feel could plus? I'm looking at a picture there of the rear turn, turnaround area. Mm -hmm. Will that handle two or three cars? Is that kind of rough, or is it? Um, the rear area of the, of the driveway will handle two, um, and we've been able to stack or park five cars in um, from the street to the front or towards the back of the driveway when we've had family members over. Um, the, on, the only thing I can think that may have prompted some concern with on-street parking 
was that there was a birthday party about two weeks back, and there were um, ten kids as well as family members, and that that did pose some parking problems. But it was a party that lasted about two hours, and it was over. And that's going to happen irrespective of a mm -hmm. – that happens at my house. Yeah. <laughs> so, we have balloons on the mailbox. Yeah, I mean, that's going to happen irrespective of a uh, in-house business. So. I'll say this, that I don't – I really don't have a problem with it, just as you – if you, as you set it out – and the reason is that, you know, one of the things that you have to show is that the proposed building or use will not have a substantial or undue adverse effect upon adjacent property. And, you know, we all, we're always curious about what the neighbors have to say. We don't, we don't make our, you know, rulings by referendum, uh, you know, take a vote by how many neighbors are for it and how many neighbors are against it. But I do look at, the, at, at what neighbors have to say as being indicative of whether there's going to be a substantial or undue adverse effect on the surrounding property. And in this case, we don't have, nobody's called me. Um, one person's called Matthew, said they were going to submit something and then didn't. Uh, I, I, I think it sounds to me like you've, you've been in operation now for several months already. Um, it doesn't sound like it's been a big deal for your neighborhood whatsoever. Uh, I, I'm content just to, I, I think that you all will, will, you know, continue to work this out and, and uh, be mindful of, of your neighbors um, as the application is, is proposed. <clears throat> I, I, that's not to say though, if, if you all, if the board sees fit to, uh, to place some sort of restrictions on it, I, I not necessarily would be opposed, but I just wanted to let, let everyone know that I'm content with it as, as it is right now. Chairman, Chairman Rogers, if I may, I usually don't comment on merits of these kinds of things unless there is a particular legal issue involved, and there's not a legal issue involved here, and yet I, I think I, I just would like to ask all of you to consider the relative merits of uh, some short-term, moderately short-term parking on the street, which hasn't appeared to cause a problem compared to the risk of backing out of a, of a driveway. Uh, now, it, of course, in daycares, it's a specific uh, requirement that they be set up so there's not backing into the street. Uh, that, that's not a specific requirement here. Uh, I, I guess it is a requirement the board could impose. Because uh, certainly backing into the street does always have its own share of risk uh, and something that in this we might want to balance against the short, fairly short term of a small number of people parking on the street. I'll just bring that up for consideration. Uh, Mrs. Richardson, have you considered maybe later on getting your, you know, rent a small place for your business? Um, no. I, I can't imagine it growing to that extent. Um, I'm pregnant, and so if anything, I'll be scaling back my classes for the time being. Um, I started it not as a way to earn money. I didn't even initially think of it as a business. I wanted to help people learn about art and teach children um, how to use their creative abilities. And that was really my only reason for starting it. I don't make much of a profit off of it at all. It's really just kind of a, a hobby and the joy I get from it. So no, I don't have any plans on expanding it to a larger scale. Chairman Rogers, I'm going to move forward with this uh, since we keep having been lulls of silence. I'm going to make a motion that we approve this. Um, 
but I am going to add one um, stipulation uh, and then a comment that if you'll work with us. Uh, the stipulation would be that we have no more than four classes in any, uh, any seven day period of time, um, which is exactly what you're, if I understood you correct, is what you're doing today. Um, the, um, it, you know, if uh, I would also like that um, if we can, that, you know, the classes would end by 6 p.m. if that, um, instead of 7, because I, I, would, I would agree with Mr. Dodd that that's not, you know, uh, an afternoon type situation. And this is not part of my motion. But the comment that I would make is, you will note that I'm not saying anything about uh, on-street parking or making a change to your driveway. My comment would be that um, that we would ask the people not to park there for the full 45 minutes, because uh, I think in your comment you may mention that that might happen. I mean, they could be, you know, doing their taxes or doing whatever in the car waiting, and I, I, I don't. I don't think we want that to happen uh, because I do think that that um, uh, if I was a neighbor, I, I I wouldn't want those cars sitting there for that length of time. And, and again, that's that's a comment. It's not part of my motion. May I may I ask yes. a question? If I was to have a private lesson with one to two students, would that be included in the four classes for a week? She do that as a matter of right. Hmm. We've sent them to the books here. <laughs> my, my Friday class does only have one student in it, and actually, my Monday class um, fluctuates from two to four students. But are you phoning a friend, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of my favorite tunes. Yeah. Um, Group instruction is it's considered group instruction if there are more than two students at any time. And that's it speaks to the, the standard that there should be no group instruction in connection with the home occupation. It says for the purpose of this subsection instruction shall be group instruction if it involves more than two students at any time. Um, however, um, any customer traffic would still requires a special use permit by the Board of Zoning Appeals. Um, and uh, so I, I think that it, it really speaks more to the, to the condition that Mr. Halliburton is proposing as to whether or not uh, there would be a certain number of uh, you know, one-on-one -on -one or two-on-one -on -one lessons that would be allowed in addition to those four, uh, four classes. Um, so uh, I, mean, I, I think that it would be uh, appropriate to address that in in the motion as to as to whether or not you would want to expand that to include any any smaller group instruction appointments. Well, as, as part of my motion, then I would say that I would not consider a one-on-one -on -one instruction being part of this uh, limit of four. Can I ask one one more question? I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, big time. Over the winter, I had a, a five-day workshop for the students where they came for two hours, and we worked with projects that required more time, like clay and um, various things like that. If I was to do one in the summer, would I need to come back and get like a special permit for that? Or I don't think we're limiting the, the time uh, necessarily of the classes. Okay. We're just limiting the number of classes based upon being more than two people in that class. Okay. So if I was to cancel my regular classes for that week and have like just a, a five-day workshop for students, I, just, I want to be clear because I don't want to break any rules or anything. Well, we hadn't passed anything yet, so yeah. I think you got to wait. And see, but <laughs> All right. what, what, you know, I think his motion was four, but I don't even think that's been seconded yet. So yeah, I think before we can tell you what you can do, you got to figure out whether you get approved and what the conditions are. Would be, yeah. Oh, we have a motion. Is there a second? Uh, I'm 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 okay with a second. Sounds like she's going to have a, a question on. Once we second, but I'll, I'll second Mr. Halliburton's motion. 
All right, we have a motion and a second. Uh, further discussion? I just want to be clear that you said four at a time, right? Four, four children to... No, I will met four classes in any one week. But it doesn't matter how many for. Well, I think as part of the, and, and Matthew or Mr. Blomley can correct me, we're, we're there, she's not asking for any more than eight kids in any one class as part of this application. That's correct. Eight, if approved as, as submitted, uh, eight would be the maximum in any given class. So the number four has to do with the number of classes in any one week, but not in, I'm not making, my motion doesn't address anything different than what was submitted in reference to the number of kids. So it could be eight cars coming. All right, any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay, we have a four to one approval uh, of that, Ms. Richardson. All right, um, I think there was, uh, Ms. Richardson, if you want to talk with Mr. Blomley, Mr. Ives um, about the questions that you have, the ramifications from what we've decided today, then we, we just have one more application, which should be pretty quick. If you just want to hang around for a second, I'm sure they'll be glad to talk to you after that, okay? All right, thank you for coming in today. Okay, we'll go to our last application, and it is um, a sign variance application S10022 by Mr. Stan Harvey of Sun Company Builders for Huddleston Steel Engineering, requesting a variance from section 25 and a quarter, 24A22 of the City of Murfreesboro Sign Ordinance, which prohibits a sign placed in or over a public utility or drainage easement for property located at 2115 Northwest Broad Street. Ms. Kerr, you can review that one for us, please. Thank you, Chairman Rogers, members of the board. The applicant is requesting permission to erect one externally illuminated freestanding wall sign with a 30 square foot display area and an overall height of six and a half feet. The sign will be located within a 15 foot sanitary sewer easement. The agreement for a sign in the City of Murfreesboro easement has been signed by the Murfreesboro Water and Sewer Department and the Director of Building and Codes. Due to the sensitivity of the placement of the sign, staff requires that the sign be located by a Tennessee registered engineer or surveyor and that a form of certification of sign placement be provided prior to permitting. All other setbacks and regulation, uh, regulations will be complied by the applicant. And I do not believe Mr. Stan Harvey is here, but I do believe Mr. Thweet has patiently waited this whole meeting in case you have any questions for anyone from Huddleston Steel. All right. Thank you, Ms. Kerr. Any questions for Ms. Kerr? All right. Um, Mr. Thweet, Mr. Thweet, anything you'd like to add to this? No, Mr. Chairman, I do not. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Then at this time, we'll go ahead and conduct a public hearing. Anyone present wishing to speak for or against this application, if you would, please come forward. And seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for any further discussions or motion. Make a motion we approve the application. I second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Mr. Tweet, you've gotten your two for o, two two and o today. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, next item on the agenda, staff reports and other business. Of which I have none today. All right. Unless there's any other business, we are adjourned.